Some morning rain in St. Louis, but it's starting to clear up. Should be a good day, and that's what the Royals are hoping for, a ray of light. And to get out of this funk and get a win this afternoon against the St. Louis Cardinals. And welcome inside Bush Stadium. I'm Ryan LaFever with Royals Hall of Famer Frank White, and it was just a little over two weeks ago the Royals had finished a perfect homestand. They had won six in a row. They're in first place in the Central with a nice lead. What has gone wrong? I think everything that can go wrong has gone wrong. I've, I've still been really impressed with the starting pitch, and I think those guys have really done a great job battling through some tough times again deep in the games. But I think you put a combination of uh, situational hitting with that, uh, the, maybe the bullpen taking on more pressure than they should take on without Joaquin Soria being in the back, and the defense. You know, the defense has made some uh, mistakes that don't even show up as errors, but uh, they've been mistakes they've given the other team 90 feet. And so, really, they just need to get back to a team effort and pulling it all together. If we look at the numbers we can see part of the problem team batting average at 243 only 3.4 runs per game the Royals still lead the American League in ERA and 10 errors in the last 13 games. The lineup Trey Hillman has kind of reconfigured the middle that started on the last homestand we know Coco Crisp is going to lead off but the number two spot has been troublesome. I'll probably change the number two slot because, um, for lack of a better term, I mean, I, just, I feel a need to do something, you know, and it uh, it hasn't been as productive for uh, the particular player of Kiaspo, not necessarily. You can't really look at the whole offense and, and say, well, the offense is, is not uh, as productive, but he certainly hasn't been since uh, I moved him from six or seven down to two. So. You know, when you're scuffling the score runs, I'd like to stick with it longer, but when you're scuffling the score runs, uh, I, I feel a need to make an adjustment with the, the order again. And Trey Hillman has. Alberto Piaspa will move down. It seemed like a good move, Frank, to take a hot hitter and move him up in the batting order. And usually a, lot, a hot hitter would like to be in that second spot, especially if you've got a leadoff guy like Coco Chris, who you're going to get better fastballs when he's on base because he's thinking you get better pitches to hit. But I think you also have to have a relationship with that leadoff guy where you know when he's going to run, have the patience to take some pitches, and be able to advance him from second once he's still second base. So the second place hitter really has a big responsibility, but the biggest responsibility is you got to think a little bit more. Another concern for the Royals coming into the season was not the bullpen. Figured it was going to be consistent, and for the most part it has been, except for the last three days, and we'll discuss that right after this. Royals baseball brought to you today by Panera Bread. Explore a menu full of hearty soups, hand tossed salads, inventive sandwiches, and savory breakfast items. Panera Bread, where every detail matters. Frank, it's been a rough last three days for the bullpen. Prior to that, the Royals' ERA was the best in the major leagues, but now 13 earned runs in the last eight innings. Is that an area of concern or just three bad days? Well, Ryan, we know that these guys can pitch. We know they got the arms to get the job done. We've seen great indications of that all already this year. But with Soria out, a lot of the guys have been taking on a little bit too much that they shouldn't take on and not knowing exactly what the roles are going to be. It's who, whoever the hot guy is. And sometimes that can be in a situation where guys uh, get, a little, get a little confused in the pen. But I think right now, the thing is that they're coming out of the pen and that first pitch strike quality is not quite what it should be. Joaquin Soria threw 25 pitches today off the mound. So that's interesting. The Royals so the haven't had a lot of save opportunities with him out, but you think him being gone has had a huge effect. Well, it has had a huge effect because nobody knows who's going to be that guy on the end. Usually you have it set up where you know who your middle guys are, who your setup guy is, and then to your closer. So your closer's out of the equation. So it could be any of those guys down there. So your mindset kind of changes. Got a couple of starting pitchers today who have something to prove. Luke Hochaver is going for his first win since last July and going up against Kyle Loesch who hasn't had a win in his last four starts. The first pitch is next. And a beautiful day in St. Louis Missouri. It's interleague weekend and rivalry weekend for many teams. Royals and the Cardinals. Game two and today's game is brought to you in high definition by Time Warner Cable where HD is free with digital cable. So Trey Hillman promised last night after the game that he would mix up the lineup. He didn't make any severe changes but he did promise that there would be another number two hitter. 
And the number two hitter will be David DeJesus, who has spent a lot of time in that position. Mark Tian will move down to the number five position as Coco tries to bun his way on. Alberto Cayaspo moves down to number six. And Miguel Olivo is back in there today. Is Joel the second bench coach for the Royals? <laughs> He's standing right next to the man. Right in there. <laughs> That's got to be breaking some sort of a rule, isn't it? Get out of there, Joel. Jeez. <laughs> Just like some guy walking in off the street. One and one on Coco. 0 for 3 last night with a walk. The Royals have seen plenty of Kyle Loesch, not necessarily in this uniform. Here's the Kia scouting report. Well, Loesch mainly is pitching the contact. He's not really worrying about the strikeouts, so I let his defense help him out. But throwing quality strikes is the key. And 5 and 5 career versus KC. This is his 20th appearance against the Royals. But the first 19 were in a Minnesota Twins uniform. Originally from the Cubs organization, traded to Minnesota as a minor leaguer. And he just never quite got it going the way the Twins had hoped. But so we talked about Wellmeyer last night, and, and just sometimes it just takes the right pitching coach with a, maybe a little bit different philosophy, and sometimes that's all that, all that matters. Brian Barden takes care of the pop-up. That's the way the game ended last night. A foul popped to third. So one away. We had some rain this morning and now warming up to 80 and because of the rain it's getting muggy again. Game started on time at 1210 Central Daylight Time the official time and temp brought to you by the parking spot. Easy to spot easy to park the parking spot at KCI. So here's David back to the number two position. You know, this might be the right time to put him back in there Frank because he's starting to warm up he's hit in seven straight after going one for three last night. Well the second spot is really a, a, a thinking position now, if there's a if you don't have a leadoff guy that steals bases then it's a little bit different but if you have a guy that gets on a lot and steals bases then you got to have the patience enough to give him a strike pretty much every time you go up there and, and then when he gets at second base you got to be able to advance him to third and have your number three guy hitting with a man at third and one out that's that's the ideal situation you want to see but a guy that can have some back control and a guy that can bunt if he has a bunt so he's got to be a well rounded guy to, to to bat second. Two balls one strike now you and I were talking last night and we've talked before about how. I mean used to have a an invitation for a base hit being a number two guy with a runner at first with that huge hole and just hit a little roller over to the right side and I I asked Trey about that before the game today as David goes up the middle and picks up his eighth career hit against Kyle Loesch in 13 at bats and Trey said he said yeah but it's not as easy as it sounds because today there's such an inside out approach for major league hitters. Well, David does a great job taking this running fastball out over the plate and staying, right, staying up the middle. He's been doing a better job of going to left field and, and center field, and that's why his average is starting to climb a little bit. Well, so I, hadn't th I hadn't thought of that, but, I mean, he's right. There are very few guys these days that, at least compared to when you play, that you can just say, oh, this guy's a dead pole hitter. It seems like everyone these days is trying to work the middle and work away. Well, as a left-handed hitter, right, and that would be, that's what made Kevin Seitzer who he was. I mean, Kevin drove the ball. Left center right center and then when he got moved to the number two spot then he learned how to hit the ball this way and it stayed that way he had 200 hits that one year and, and that's kind of, that took away a lot of his power because he was more of a guy that drove the ball when he first came up. Uh, you look at uh, when Willie Wilson was getting on and Hal McRae batted second and when Hal drove in at 133 runs that year he knew he was going to get a lot of fastballs and the thing that he and Hilt and Willie had worked out was it, it was a left handed pitcher who Willie didn't read a lot. You know he, he couldn't get a good jump, and he said, "Well, you get your pitch, go ahead and hit." And if it's a guy he thought it could steal on, then how would give him a hit, a, a, a pitch to go on? And but they had it worked out where I'm going to go on the first pitch, the second pitch. So that's why if you got the same two guys every time, then they can work through things out between themselves. Billy 
Hammers it to right field, but right at Stavanoa. That's right where the Royals want Butler to be. Hitting line drive to that part of the field, so two down. Cardinals defensively today with Duncan, Rasmus, and Stavano in the outfield, same as last night. Barden at third. Tyler Green at short today with Schumacher and Pujols. And Yadier Molina is doing the catching. Jose Guillen 0 for 3 with a walk last night. I remember at the end of his career, Ken Griffey Sr., when he was playing with Ken Griffey Jr. in Seattle, would take batting practice, and it wasn't impressive at all. He just hit these little rollers to the right side, these ground balls, and you're thinking, wow. You know, meanwhile, his kid is, you know, knocking out seats <laughs> all over the outfield. And but sure enough, once the game rolled around, Harold Reynolds would get on first, and he'd hit that same little ground ball to the right side, it would get through first and third for his kid. Well, Ken Griffey Sr., he knew how to pull a ball when he wanted to pull a ball. And the, but he that one year he had like 38 infield hits. You know, they just he just beat the ball down in the turf and just run. But but he knew situationally what he had to do and how to get it done. Slicing towards right center, but it hangs up for Rasmus, and the Royals are finished in the first inning. Few changes to Tony LaRusso's lineup for game two, brought to you by MI Bank and kind of flip flopping Rasmus and Barden. Rasmus will bat second, and Barden moves down to number seven. Yadier Molina will do the catching today, and Tyler Green hits ninth after the pitcher. Kyle Loesch. Similar lineup. Resulted in a five to nothing victory last night. Here's the Kia scouting report on Luke Hochaver making his third start. Well, I think after the last two starts, Ryan, I think Luke just needs to go out there and just throw caution to the wind and just throw his sinker out over the plate, let it play, and just concentrate on throwing strikes and and whatever happens, happens. Good start there, jumping ahead of Schumacher. Luke went three and a third on Sunday against Baltimore. Gave up three runs, three walks. Royals came back and won the game seven to four. And the last man that Hochaver faced was in the fourth inning. He hit a batter, and that's when Trey Hillman figured that was enough. The Royals had a rested bullpen. And Hochaver going just three and a third. You know, when, when Luke came to double A when I was there, and, and he had a real strict, aggressive approach to going into a game, and then once he got into a game, Big bounce off the plate and Kiaspo juggling it and grabs it with the bare hand to throw out Schumacher. And once he got in the game, he really just kind of revved up and 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 really got to the point where he kind of ran out of energy. And and so he looks like he's going from the Luke who has a lot of energy to Luke who has no energy. And and you know you hear the comment about just be Luke, but you know maybe that other Luke is Luke. Maybe he just needs to go out and perform that way. Mm -hmm. Well that Luke resulted in him being the first overall pick in the draft so he was doing something right and that Luke was five and oh with an ERA under one at triple A as Rasmus hits it on the ground to Avila so the sinker has produced two ground balls. Trey was telling us before the game today that felt that Luke was the Luke that we expect really amped up fired up. Before that start in Oakland, but then maybe went too far in the opposite direction on Sunday against Baltimore. Maybe it was a little too calm. Well, sometimes you can be trying to be something that you're really not, and and sometimes you got to go out there and be yourself. And if you amped up, and if it takes you deep into the game, then then that's where it is. But you basically you just got to pay attention to what's going on around you. And, and I think if you can be amped up and pay attention to base runners, throw strikes, and, and keep your adrenaline level going without burning out, I think you'd be all right. Facing Albert Pujols with two outs and nobody on. Pujols with a single, two walks, one of them intentional last night, and scored a run. Hochaver facing the Cardinals for the first time. 
Prino. And those pitches there really aren't that bad of pitches. They're just off the inside corner just by a little bit, but he's he's in the strike zone. It's not like he's missing by a lot, and I think that's a positive sign for him. Four pitch walk. Pujols had one of those in the first inning yesterday. So he's at first, two down. Chris Duncan coming up, and we say hello to Joe Goldberg. Well, Ryan, it's a warm day down here as it was last night. A little cloud cover, so that helps right now. But a couple of things that the players need today. Obviously, a lot of water, but then sunscreen, obvious one. But here's one maybe that you might not be thinking about. Bug spray. The mosquitoes down here are absolutely awful. That's what the players and the coaches were talking about. Don't want to get bitten up too bad. It is a little bit on the nasty side down here today. So there's to you guys. They coming in off the river. Yes, they are the uh, Mississippi River kind, not the Missouri River kind. Okay. I, I don't know what the difference is. No, there's, a, the, there's a huge difference, Joel. Huge. One of them, the, the needle's a little longer than the other. <laughs> Last year when we were here, the Mississippi was flooded. Remember that? You couldn't even go all the way down the, the steps over by the Gateway Arch. Uh, Joel's wearing that pretty nice blue shirt today. You don't want to kill too many mosquitoes on your shirt. I, um, by the way, when I was standing next to John Gibbons, I was trying to get to the other side. It's a little crowded down here. I, I tried to kill one of them. He pointed out I missed. I, I did. I did offer a little help on a double switch if he needed one later, and I realized I, I have no purpose over there. Yeah, you were right in that huddle. It's a, no, no, no. I, I turned my back. I didn't want to eavesdrop, so I can't even tell you what they were talking about. It's a little crowded down here in one of those, one of those rare parks where the. Um, the coaching staff actually is in the camera well. Oh, so they're in your territory. The cameraman's territory. I, I'm I'm in their territory too. I got you. <laughs> I don't know. There, there's rules. I'm sure I'm breaking something. Albert Pujol's got a huge break. Doesn't even need to slide. And now, Ochaver, after getting two ground balls from Schumacher and Rasmus, is missed with seven straight pitches. Well, you, you don't pay attention to base runners. They will take advantage of you, and that's one thing that uh, Luke's got to really keep working hard on is just paying attention to what's going on around him on the bases. Seven stolen bases for Pujols, so he will run. And now back-to-back four-pitch walks. Now, this is something that Luke had some issues with last year, even when he had some games where he pitched decent was getting that final out of the inning. Well you just don't want to lose your concentration. You know you just want to stay with it. You know Albert you pitch a little careful too but after that you go right back to your game plan. Here today's Toyota League leaders brought to you by your Kansas City area Toyota dealers and the Cardinals are fourth best in the majors with runners in scoring position at 291 as a team. Trailing three American League teams. And this is very similar to yesterday's game, and now Luke has missed with nine in a row, and he's going to hear from Bob McClure. But last night, it appeared that Kyle Davies might get out of the first inning, stranding a couple of runners, but it was Nick Stabanoa, the rookie, who's getting some playing time because. Ryan Ludwig and Rick Ankiel are on the disabled list and he delivered in the first with a two out two run single and now he bats with two on two out in the first today. But you know you know Ryan when Albert Pujols at first and, 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 and Billy was a little bit behind him then he took off uh, Luke didn't really pay a lot of attention to him but at second base which he don't normally still third base he's doing uh, one look two looks so he's giving him probably too much attention back there now that he's in scoring position and he should just focus mainly on the hitter here. This is four straight games now that a Royals opponent has had a runner in scoring position in the first inning. And Stavanoa helped him out by chasing a breaking ball that was down and away. Well this is what Luke's capable of right here. Good good slider right there to out in the middle dropping down and that's a real good pitch and and really Miguel Olivo you would probably just sit down in the middle of the plate and say hey just throw the ball and then rather than having pitch the corners and and he's having a trouble with your command you just sit in the middle of the plate and let let you let your pitches play themselves across the middle.
Just foul. You just rang a bell for me when you said that. I remember Dan Reichert and his great sinker and all the movement that he had. That there was a time when Royal said to him, you know what? Don't even think about the corners anymore. Just take that sinker and throw it right down the middle. And the Royals catchers for a long stretch during one of his seasons just put the target. I mean, nose just right there, right down the middle of the plate. Uh, when you're having trouble with command, that's what you need to do, especially on a sinker ball. You get to the point where you develop your command a lot better. Then you can steal some outside corners from the right handed hitters by making that sinker come back across the outside corner. But when you're trying to get yourself established, then you got to get in the middle of the plate and let it just move down and in the righties and the left and away from left handers. Two and two on Stabenoa. With two outs and nobody on it. Four pitch walk to Albert Pujols and a four pitch walk to Chris Duncan. Still two and two. Well, in the first inning on Sunday against Baltimore, Luke gave up a leadoff walk, but then remember he picked off Brian Roberts. He had to work around an error in the second inning and got some help from Olivo throwing a runner out trying to steal but in the third couple of walks three runs scored and then after the hit batter in the fourth he was out. And everything is inside on Stabenoa fastball or breaking ball. And when I managed against Stabenoa in, in double A, he liked the fastball out over the plate. He had a lot of power in the right center field, so that might be why they're trying to crowd him on the inside. Was he still catching then, or he had already moved to the outfield? He was in right field. That is a fair ball, and it just misses that corner and rolls deep. Duncan waved to the plate. Avila's relay is offline. It gets past Hochaver. And Stabanoa, if not for Billy Butler being heads up, might have been able to score. Well, I guess that's home field advantage. Yesterday, Tien hit a ball like that and went up in the seats. Uh, this is a breaking ball here, Ryan. It stayed up and out over the plate, and Savino had that good hook on it, but got right inside the bag at third base. And the base runners are going all the way here. The ball gets down in that corner, and uh, last night I was wondering if the third base coach would actually see, but uh, Louis Aquino, 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 he actually got up on the line where he could see. Now 0 1 on Yadier Molina. So Stabenoa has driven in two in the first inning in each of the first two games of this series. Molina was not in there last night. Jason LaRue caught the shutout, a four pitcher shutout. Molina, the regular catcher, he comes in today 0 for his last nine. One ball, two strikes. Luke trying to win at the big league level for the first time since July the 11th. He spent most of the end of the year on the disabled list. He had that rib cage injury and went on the DL in the middle of August. Over to Butler at first, who has a long run back to the bag, but Molina runs like his brothers, and that's an easy out. But the Cardinals get two in the first. So two to nothing, Cardinals for the second straight game. We go to the second, and here's today's you call it presented by Sprint. 
Who do you think will win the National League Central? Milwaukee has been great, and that's without CC Sabathia and Ben Sheets. Cardinals have been a surprise. Reds have been a surprise, and the Cubs have been a surprise. If you consider that everyone was picking that they would just run away with this division. Text 432 432. Enter keyword Royals, followed by a space A B C or D. Standard text rates apply. T and down quickly 0 and 2. Mark one for four with a double last night, a double that cost the Royals a run because it bounced up into that little area that angles towards the left field line, prevented Coco Chris from scoring. Pounded off the plate. Loesch will run up the line with Tian and beat him to the bag. And now Alberto Cayaspo, who was 0 for 4 as the number two hitter last night, and now bats sixth. Well, that's an interesting grip right there on that pitch, Ryan. That uh, a split finger. Got the, the. What is it? Is that the was that in between the middle and the ring the finger? Middle and the ring finger, and he and he really turns it over so the ball will go down and away to left hander. Had a play off the bat of Kiaspo. I've heard that pitch referred to as the Vulcan splitter in reference to Leonard Nimoy and Star <laughs> Trek, the Vulcan, and instead of wedging it between the middle finger and the forefinger, the middle finger and the ring finger. Yeah, most, most of the change of the thrown with three fingers and and they try to get it to turn over. And that one, you, you kind of rotate your your wrist to the outside, and and that makes that ball go down and away to left-handed hitters. Kiaspo, one of the toughest in the American League to strike out. You know he has all the qualities you would think to be a good number two hitter tough to strike out. Good hand eye coordination. Well some hitters just want to see the ball and hit the ball they don't they don't want to have to deal with uh, you know they want to deal with the normal situations. if there's a man on second I got to try to get him over or or what it might be on a hit and run but. When you when you're batting second and you got a base dealer ahead of you, it's a lot more thought process involved. And then there's the dilemma. I mean, at what point do you cater to what the hitter wants, and at what point do you tell the hitter, "Hey, it's not about you; it's what we need from you to win some ball games." Well, you, everybody's be, is going to be asked at some point in their career to do something uh, for the team, and and that requires a, a, a little bit more thinking, a little bit more preparation, but. You go out there and you kind of get it done. I mean, I never would have dreamed that I was going to bat fourth in the World Series, knowing that they were going to walk George every time that they could to pitch to me. I mean, that's an enormous amount of pressure to take on. But the key thing was just don't try to be anything other than what you are. Rasmus retires Kiaspo, and Kyle Loesch has retired five of the first six. And that brings up Miguel Olivo, not in there last night. John Buck behind the plate. And Buck was two for four with a couple of singles. So Levo hitting at 218. He has three home runs, but he only has five total extra bases so far. And gets us back to what we've said a hundred times the last two or three games. It is no longer early in the season. No, it's time for the guys to kind of level off and, and produce at a consistent pace. One ball, two strikes. Kyle Loesch only went four innings on Monday against Milwaukee and took the loss. Gave up four runs in four innings. Walk three. 
lost the game eight to four. The Brewers sweeping the Cardinals. And now Loesch hasn't won in his last four. His ERA in his last three is over ten and a half. And that's hammered to left. Duncan diving. That wasn't a good choice. And it skips by him into the wall. So Levo adds to his extra base hit total. And the Royals have a runner in scoring position with two down. Miguel did a great job laying off a slider down and away to pitch before this one. This is a breaking ball that stayed up in the middle of the plate. And, and that's really the territory that Miguel Olivo thrives on. And he really turned on that fastball. And I'm, I'm sorry, that breaking ball, and got it into the left field corner. Only the second double for Olivo this year. Now, Yadier Molina wants to talk things over with Kyle Loesch. There is an open base with Mike Avila's coming up and the pitcher on deck, Joel Goldberg. And Luke Hochaver right now, guys, is standing in the on deck circle. And I was talking to him about hitting yesterday, and he said, you know, I don't know what's going to happen as far as who's going to be the best hitter, but I'm not going to cheat myself. Mike Jacobs reminded him you're getting out there to bunt and you're not doing anything else. Let's go back up to you guys. <laughs> well if the situation were different meaning if it were later in the game. Open base here. And you don't give Mike Avilas a chance to drive in a run you go after Hochaver but it is early. Cardinals have a two to nothing lead and the goal in the National League. Is to. Have the number eight hitter make the final out because then you have the pitcher leading off the next inning. Right. Mike 0 for 2 with a strikeout and he bounced into a double play in last night's game. Joel is like, where's Waldo today? Everywhere we look, there's Joel. <laughs> Blue coach Haver warming up. There's Joel. Trey Hellman going to talk to his bench coach in the dugout. There's Joel. <laughs> Rasmus in center field. Olivo is stranded at second base. Cardinals lead two to nothing after an inning and a half. Two to nothing. Cardinals on a two run double from Nick Stabanoa. Here's today's Firestone leaderboard and we mentioned this last night but since interleague play began 12 years ago two of the best hitters since interleague play began are in this series Albert Pujols at 351 Larry Walker who played briefly for the Cardinals at 346 and then David DeJesus at 345. And don't bother trying to talk to David about that. He doesn't want to hear anything of it. He just <laughs> wants to go out and play ball. Doesn't want to hear about who he struggles against, who he does well against. Well, that's how when I was playing, I wanted to know. <laughs> I wasn't that superstitious. If I was playing well, tell me I'm playing well, because I know I'm gonna have a spot when I'm not gonna play well, and you're gonna tell me about that too. So, so I want to hear both sides of it. <laughs> So keep it fair. Be, keep, keep it fair. Be stay, consistent. You know, stay even. You know, I mean, <laughs> there's no guarantees. So you better, you better really get your pat on the backs and get your attaboys while you can, because it's a long season. You're gonna hit that little rough spot, and and you haven't had any good things come your way, and and you feel like it's a longer season when nobody's patting you on the back ever. Big bounce to Avila's chest high. So Brian Barton, who scored twice last night, is out on the ground ball to short. Ochaver. Had a good start to the first inning. He got Schumacher to pound one off the plate with a good sinker and then got a ground ball off the bat of Rasmus. So two outs, nobody on, but then he threw nine straight balls. He walked Pujols and Duncan and then Stabanoa with the two out, two run double. And now the pitcher, Kyle Loesch, who's hitting 214, he can swing the bat. Some guys come to the plate and they look like pitchers. Kyle Lowe, she looks like a position player. He looks like a yeah, he does. very comfortable <laughs> up there. You know, getting back to David, yesterday I did the same thing. I said, David, you, 
you, you got a, you got a nice average in that league play. That's pretty nice. He says, "Oh, don't jinx me, don't jinx me." I said, "No, that's a compliment." <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't live like that. I'd, I'd be too nervous. <laughs> Afraid to talk about anything? Afraid to talk about anything. Hey, Frank, you look good today. I like your outfit. <laughs> Don't jinx me. I might get in the way of a seagull or something. <laughs> David makes a nice running play in deep left field. So, like the yeah. first inning, Hochaver has the first two in the second. Uh, Lowe's don't, didn't only look like a hitter, he swung the bat like a hitter. He, he really drove that ball to left center field. David had to make a nice running catch going back over his shoulder. And now the number nine hitter is shortstop Tyler Green, who hit a home run in his only plate appearance last night in the opposite field against Horacio Ramirez. Well, the Cardinals figured they'd have Green playing at shortstop this year, but they were thinking more of Khalil Green rather than Tyler Green. Tian diving on the grass to his feet quickly to throw out Tyler Green, and Luke Hochaver bounces back for the one, two, three second inning. <laughs> Luke Hochaver will lead off in the third inning, 2 0 Cardinals. Here's today's Roadrunner Turbo Speed Pitch comparison. Both Loesch and Hochaver at 92 in the first two innings. You can double your speed with Roadrunner Turbo from Time Warner Cable. Luke had a chance to hit last year. He pitched in a couple of interleague games, one at Arizona, and the other one was against Colorado, but that was at Kauffman Stadium with the American League rules. Down on three pitches and Kyle Loesch strikes out his first. And now Coco opened the game with a foul out to third base. You know, we were going over Kyle Loesch in the first inning and you know remembering him with Minnesota he had the great arm and again the twins always thought he was going to turn into something special it didn't happen in Minnesota he had his moments but overall left with a losing record on a team that was winning a lot of games but it seems like when these reclamation projects happen here in St. Louis it seems like the strikeouts go down. But the walks also go down. Pitches per inning, pitches per start go down. And one of Dave Duncan's approaches is maybe more control instead of more velocity. I think it gets back to convincing a guy that he needs to change and he can't live on the edge all the time and, and the walks go up and the base runners on base all the time. You got to trust your defense and you trust your defense by throwing actual strikes making the hitters put the ball in play not trying to strike him out because when you strike him out you throw more pitches and just minimizing your pitches and and just trusting your defense to make the plays. You know Banny went through that a little bit too you know he tell you one he was concerned about not getting enough strikeouts but what you do is you increase your pitch count when you try to strike guys out you, you want you want guys to hit the ball but you want to hit your pitch. And you want to make it down in the zone and try to give you your defense a chance to play and, and throw more consistent strikes. Three and two on Coco. One of the remarkable things about Dave Duncan that people forget. I mean, you know, he's one of the best pitching coaches in the game, maybe one of the best ever. He was a catcher. He wasn't even a pitcher. Well, catchers have a real good knowledge of what a guy throws best and. Rasmus has been busy in center field and that is already his fourth put out two down in the third inning. That's why it's important that catchers realize right away what pitches pitches have working and what they don't have working and if it's not working don't call it and stay with what's working until they can find it somewhere in the mix they could throw one in here to see if they found it again. But if not you just go away from it. I remember Zach's game when he lost his fastball command that one inning. 
he threw like seven straight sliders because that's the pitch he could control at that particular time. So that's about being aware of what what you have working for you at that time and staying with it until the other pitches catch up. David single to center in the first inning. So he has hit an eight straight. Moving back to the number two spot today. One ball, one strike. Oh. On the outside corner to make it one and two. Missouri Valley Tournament Championship game is tonight. Creighton and Wichita State here on Fox Sports Kansas City at 7 o'clock. And Rasmus again. He'll make it five put outs and Loach's first one, two, three inning. Bottom of the third, two to nothing Cardinals. Hope you're having a good Memorial Day weekend so far. Glad you're with us this afternoon. Cardinals two straight games getting two runs in the first inning. Top of the order here with Skip Schumacher who grounded out his first time. Then Colby Rasmus grounded out. And it looked like Hochaver was going to have a nice easy one two three first but two walks and a double and just like that he was down two nothing. Nice play by the home plate umpire Chris Guccione. <laughs> Reminds me of a Royals fan. The Royals fans in the lower level at Kauffman Stadium who know to play the bounce off the press box on foul balls. <laughs> so you got to know your ballpark. But the runner on third better know what's going on back there too. That was a perfect strike back to the pitcher covering the plate. That <laughs> coming down from third. <laughs> Ian all the way back to the track. Ian at the wall. Gone. Another breaking ball that Luke left out over the plate, right in the middle. Schumacher really got the hit out on that one. You know, for the difficulties that Jose Guillen has had in right field this year, he really played that well. I mean, that was textbook as far as getting to the wall first and then worrying about left or right. Well, I, I guess his legs uh, continue to get stronger under him. I, that, that, that his defense should improve and his jump still should improve. But the one thing I like about him is that he, there's no lack of the effort that it goes into him wanting to play every day. How many times have we seen a guy just kind of coast back to the wall and then maybe they jump too soon because they didn't realize they were close to the wall or they jump into the wall and he just put his head down, sprinted to the wall, and then made the adjustment. He had no play, obviously. So Schumacher's third home run of the year and now it's two and one on Rasmus. Grounded out to short in the first. Oh for his last seven. Big hop for Billy. He'll take it himself. One down in the bottom of the third. Well, the Royals are back home on Monday and the Royals have a great deal if you want to come out and watch. Royals and the Tigers on Memorial Day a 110 game. Royals are going to give you a day version of both Royal Knights. So you'll get a $5 upper level ticket and a day version of Buck Knight brought to you by Independence Honda. So $1 concessions, $5 tickets. And we encourage you to come out early because 20,000 tickets have already been sold and going to be approaching the 30,000 mark quickly. So if you're thinking about coming out to the ballpark, don't waste any time as two holes. 
on base for the second time singles to center field. One on one out. You know Ryan in Trey's meeting today he really was talking about mainly the bullpen and when they come out of the bullpen he's not really he said the quality of the pitches that they're trying to throw is there but it's just they're more up in the zone and and that's the same for Luke today he got hurt on a breaking ball up to Stavanoa for a double with two RBI he got hurt on another breaking ball up for the home run to Schumacher he can tell when he gets the ball down even that base hit by uh, Pujols right there you can live with that because he's the ball sinking and he's getting his ground balls. And now Duncan walked and scored along with Pujols on the Stabenoa double in the first inning. Billy able to get a glove on it keep Pujols at first. Albert stole his seventh of the year in the first inning against Hochaver. Now it's kind of an interesting way to put it and you know the manager has to do this to try and find the positive when things aren't going well but when you say you know they're making good pitches just not putting them in good spots. Right. Well I mean in some ways that's like saying you know player a boy he's got a good swing he's just not making any contact. <laughs> and Trey obviously is not the first manager or pitching coach or pitcher for that matter to say that but you can have all the movement in the world you can have all the velocity in the world if it's not in a good spot it's not a good pitch. It ends up not being a good pitch because of where it's hit and, and you get it you make outs on them it's a good pitch but if you get base hits it's a bad pitch. Well we don't need to name any names but. Five six years ago seven years ago it seemed like. There were a number of pitchers that would just go on and on about. You know. I thought I made some good pitches today and well yeah but you went three innings and gave up 11 runs. Pujols is running and Kiasco can't get it. Avilas was able to get Pujols to slide. And now Avilas got Pujols at second base. Mike Avilas made that play. He convinced Pujols to slide rather than go first to third and then made the tag on the throw from Guillen. But well, trust out to do that when the guy's coming down never takes a look at home to see where the ball's going and then what he did well here he saw the throw from right field. So rather than letting the ball get to him he ran up and made the throw shorter and made the play. And you and I will say you should always take a little bit of luck. <laughs> and now Coco into right center to make the play. So the Royals come up big on defense. Cardinals get one on the Shoemaker home run. Well, when the team is struggling, I guess the manager wants to make sure that the players are concentrating and their heads up and. Good heads up play on defense with the Royals getting Albert Pujols out on the bases. Well that was a real heads up play by Mike first he caught him coming down not looking in the home plate to see where the ball was hit. And then he uh, digged him in thinking the throw was coming to him and made him slide. And then he did a great job then he moved back in his cutoff position. Uh, making Albert think that he could go to third. And then as the throw came from get Jose and right field he cut the distance down on the throw. And really put himself ahead of Albert on that play and that's how he was able to tag him out. 0 oh and 1 to Billy lined out hard to right field in the first inning. And now lines it just foul off the right field line. Royals now have not scored in 18 consecutive innings. They scored in the third inning on Thursday. Losing to the Indians didn't score again shut out last night. And now scoreless in the first inning, first three innings today. 
That pitch had some good movement breaking down and in on Billy. And Loesch strikes out his second. And that'll bring up Jose Guillen out on a fly ball to center field in the first inning. The Royals have flied out to center five times already. Off the fist. Barden with some help from Pujols on a stretch into foul territory. Two down. And now Mark Tian, who grounded back to Loesch his first time up. Well, Kyle Loach has done a real good job, Ryan, of running that fastball in on the, on the right hand hitters for the Royals. He got Billy on a fastball, a running fastball in for a strikeout, and, and he used it again to get inside on Jose again to jam him and get him to roll up on an easy ground ball. Tian began the year as the Royals' number three hitter. And now Billy Butler has been batting in that spot. Billy was out of the lineup last night. Mike Jacobs hit third, so Tian back in the number three position, but hitting fifth today. And when Alex Gordon comes back from the disabled list, I think everything is pointing for Alex to take over again at third. And Mark perhaps will be bouncing around from position to position and He's still bouncing around from spot to spot in the lineup. <laughs> well, that's going to be an interesting decision. Uh, I, I think the Raws have really seen a lot of Mark at third base and they have to like what they've seen at third base. The throw down completes the strikeout. Loesch gets the Royals in order and strikes out two. Royals baseball brought to you today by Kia Motors. To learn more, visit Kia.com. By AT&T, switch to the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. And by Colorado Tourism, plan your summer vacation at Colorado.com. Oh, okay. and one on Yadier Molina. Grounded out to Butler at first in the first inning. Up the middle, base hit into center field. Five hits now for the Cardinals. Got a two run double from Stavano in the first, and a solo home run from Schumacher in the third. Don't forget, Inc. College Nights are a great deal for high school and college students with a valid student ID. It's every Wednesday at Coffin Stadium and offering $7 lower level seats. The next is on May the 27th against the Tigers and the Royals will also be hosting a happy hour with concession specials in the outfield experience. So come on out. Royals in the first place Tigers. On Monday afternoon. Tuesday night Wednesday night. Ball one to Brian Barden. Grounded out to Avilas in the second inning. So Hochaver giving up two in the first and then had a one two three second inning allowed a run on three hits in the third Molina running that is a hit and run and Olivo trying to throw over the batter from his knees and Yadier Molina with his second stolen base of the year. Uh, Luke's got that big hot leg kick. He's like one four two when he does that. This is probably a hit and run. The, the pitch got missed and 
maybe if Olivo stands up, he may be able to get some kind of obstruction call or interference call from the uh, from the catcher. I mean, from the hitter falling across the plate. That is only his sixth career stolen base, and this is his sixth major league season. The Molinas can play, and they're all very good catchers, but none of them have ever competed on the Puerto Rican Olympic track team. Back to Hochaver and a play at third. And Molina is out easily. So he picks up a rare stolen base, but then makes a base running blunder, and it's an easy out at third for the Royals. Well, this is a great play. This is one of those plays where Mark Tien, the third baseman, has got to be screaming loud for the pitcher to hear him. And, and Luke made a nice throw, and they were able to get that, get Molina out of there going in third base. Poor base running. You figure there's going to be an out on that play no matter what but if someone's going to be out you want it to be the batter runner going to first and not lose a guy in scoring position right your runner on second has got to make sure the ball gets over the mound then he's got a chance to go but if he doesn't wait for the ball to clear the pitcher then this is what happens right here Kyle Loesch who can swing the bat Lined out to left field in the second inning. It's a slicer off the right field line, and Guillen won't quite get there. Well, the Big 12 baseball tournament continues today in Oklahoma City. Tomorrow Royals viewers can watch the championship game on an alternate channel or on Fox Sports Kansas City after the Royals game to find the channel number in your area go to Fox Sports dot com slash Kansas City with Baylor beating KU and just getting underway now Texas and K State good bunt and Butler gets it to Kiaspo. The Royals recovered nicely after three guys went for the ball and it looked like someone might be out of position. Here are other Big 12 baseball tournament games today. Oklahoma and MU. And then Texas A&M and Texas Tech all those teams at one and one. K-State who is among the top 25 this year is the only undefeated team so far in the tournament. So Barton at second base with two down. Tyler Green takes a strike. Lost a base hit on a diving play by Tian at third in the second inning. Caught by Tien at third, and that's the inning. Oakshaver throws a scoreless four. And at the end of four, three to nothing Cardinals. It's time to bring you up to speed with the AT&T Rapid Rewind. AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. Three to nothing Cardinals to the fifth with Kiaspo, Olivo, and Avilas coming up. Another big crowd after a sellout here last night of over 43,000. They were giving away a uh, Albert Pujol statue. Bob McClure is out to talk to the second base umpire Jerry Lane. About something that appears to be going on out near the 
Royals bullpen. Maybe the phone isn't working. So maybe Mac went out there to tell Jerry Lane, hey, tell those guys to answer the phone. And now <laughs> Mac is saying the phone is not working. And now pitch was about to be thrown, but Jerry Lane was not in his normal position. But sometimes when the when the uh, phones don't work, they want to be able to have a runner that that guy can run down and, and and communicate with the bullpen. I think Bob was probably trying to get an OK for that to happen. And it appears that Robinson Tejeda is going to be that guy. Well, so much for not letting Luke Hochaver know that the Royals are going to get some activity in the bullpen. <laughs> I mean that being seriously. I mean, being serious, you'd rather, you know, Hochaver just came off a scoreless fourth, have him sit in the dugout, maybe think he's starting to pull things together, have someone warm up. Maybe he won't notice he's in his zone, but now he knows when he takes the mound in the fifth inning that he's on thin ice. Ball one on Kiaspo, a fly out to center field in the second inning. But it might it might be a case too, Ryan, where they they they, they given to hate a series of, of, of combinations of what may happen. I, they may not get anyone up with him when he goes out, but they may he may be going down and say, okay, if this happens, you're you're coming in. If this happens, you're going to get so really just a, a good scenario for the bullpen coach to, to work with if, in case something uh, whichever th how things go on the field when Luke goes back out. Sidney Ponson, by the way, he's throwing the ball up against a wall, so he's not. Throwing to a catcher yet. Kiaspo for the second time today flies out to Rasmus in center field. So Alberto is 0 for 6 in this series after having an eight game hitting streak. Our sprint, you call it question today. Who do you think is going to win the National League Central? Both the Cubs and the Brewers made it to the postseason last year. Brewers have been a surprise 10 games above 500 followed by the Cardinals and the Reds and so far a disappointing year for the Cubs who were shut out again yesterday and Olivo working on his second extra base hit. So Miguel who had only five extra base hits all season coming in today is hammered two doubles in the same spot. Well, this is that fat that sinker that I want to say two seamer. He's running in on the right handers, but Olivo opens up pretty early, and that's really a good pitch for him to swing at. And, and he was able to keep that ball fair that time, the second time for a two second double of the game. Well, maybe here's that one of those scenarios you're talking about, Frank. It might not have as much to do with what happens when Hochaver's on the mound. It might have to do with what happens with the Royals at the plate. And Zavila swings at a bad pitch and is down. 0 oh and 1. If the Royals were to get a double here from Avilas, or maybe even a single from Avilas, and you have first and third, nobody out, do you pinch hit this early for Luke Hochaver? I think it's just going to depend on how much confidence Trey has in Luke uh, at that particular point. And that's the one thing about the National League game. The game a lot of times will dictate what you do with the pitcher based on how well the pitcher's throwing. I should say the score of the game. Two and one. <laughs> two and two as Loesch missed the outside corner with the pitch before and hit it this time. Royals have now gone. 19 straight innings without scoring a run. Avila strikes out, and that's number four for Los. Tomorrow, NASCAR on Fox heads to Charlotte, North Carolina, where Casey Kane will try to defend his title against a full field of the world's best drivers. Coverage of the Coca Cola 600 from Charlotte begins Sunday at 4 p.m. in HD on Fox. Now, 
it's tradition during Royals broadcast Frank that the analyst then gives us a few little tidbits on NASCAR after I read the promo. <laughs> well Ryan Newman has a post in, in, in this race and uh, you know that's always the, the best place to be and Kyle Busch is running second followed by the guy that everybody knows Jeff Gordon. Are you kidding me. Yeah in mid Missouri Carl Edwards is 19th. <laughs> you want another one. <laughs> sure. Clint Boyer in Boyer Kansas 19. I'm sorry 24. This is frightening. I used to have NASCAR season tickets. Are you really. I, I did with the first couple of years they were there. At the new track at the new track yeah. but because of the baseball schedule I wasn't able to go. So I used to sell them to my friends all the time. Ochaver struck out in the third inning. Now grounds to short. Green throws him out, and the Royals aren't able to make anything out of Olivo's second double of the game. Three to nothing Cardinals as we go to the fifth, and Luke Ochaver was able to keep the score there in the fourth. Thanks to this pitch by pitch sequence to Brian Barton and his play on defense. But he was able to keep the ball down for the most part in this at bat and really got gotten a swing over a pitch here. And, and there's a ball right back to Luke that he really made a heads up play and cut down a potential run scoring opportunity for the Cardinals at third base. Pitch by pitch brought to you by Arby's. Top of the order. And Skip Schumacher, who homered his last time. Skip Schumacher batting for the seventh time in this series. Every single time he has let off. <laughs> his last is bat in the third inning. And Luke threw him a slaughter that stayed up and. He really got the bat on it and they hit a line drive over the right field wall for a home run. Well, if the landline doesn't work, go to a cell phone. If that doesn't work, we'll be using smoke singles. <laughs> and that telephone probably had walkie talkie features mm -hmm. to it. Schumacher helping out Hochaver. It's two balls, two strikes. It says here that you first press the on button and then the number that you want to dial. It may be easier to run in the locker room and get Bob McClure and John Miserock personal cell phones and, and just use those. Yeah. Or maybe just get to the front of the dugout and go, hey, <laughs> tell Ponson to start throwing. <laughs> Relay it through David in left field. Yeah. <laughs> Still two and two on Schumacher. Well, Hochaver is into the fifth inning for the first time since being called up. Gave up two runs in the first inning. And both of those. Runners that scored reached on four pitch walks and since then he's given up the home run to Schumacher. And now three balls two strikes. Luke hasn't walked anyone since putting Pujols and Duncan on in the first. Tian. Handles the soft liner at third. Schumacher is one for three. So four and a third for Hochaver. Here's the James B. Nutter and Company pitch count 62 pitches. He'd still like to see a better strike to ball ratio than that, but 
If you're just looking for some gradual improvement from Ho Chaver, there was a lot of room for improvement after his first start at Oakland. And he was only able to go three and a third on Sunday, but looking better today, giving up three runs and four and a third. But still not quite where he was at Omaha. Oh, boy. Butler to the bag and two down in the fifth inning. Hey fans don't forget the Royals as part of their salute to the Negro Leagues coming up on Saturday a week from today May the 30th first 20,000 fans are going to get this Monarchs jersey from Pepsi Royals and the Chicago White Sox. That's a 6 10 game. So come on out and that's another game where the tickets are going fast. 1-800-6-ROYALS, royals.com, area Hy-Vee food stores, or go to the stadium box offices. The Royals have announced they're going to open the gates at 3 o'clock for that 6-10 game to accommodate what we're expecting to be a big turnout. Both teams will be wearing Negro League uniforms on that day. There will be several pregame events including an autograph session with former Negro League players so should be a special day at the ballpark it is every year in the Royals salute to the Negro League so come on out next Saturday. Oh and two on Albert Pujols a four pitch walk a stolen base and a run scored in the first and then single to center in the third. Who holds second in the league in home runs, third in the league in RBIs, first in the league in runs scored. First in the major leagues in destroying stadium signs. <laughs> Gets him on a ground ball to short, and Hochaver gets the Cardinals in order in the fifth. As we go to the top of the sixth, St. Louis three, Kansas City nothing. We go to our Sonic Slam inning, and the contestant is Diana Halpin from Olathe, Kansas. If the Rawls hit a home run this inning, Diana will win $1,000. But if the Rawls hit a grand slam out of the park, Diana will win 25 grand from Sonic and the Kansas City Royals. And now the Royals trying to snap a string of 20 consecutive scoreless innings. Top of the order, and Coco hits it hard, but backhanded by Schumacher. Coco running hard, but he is 0 for 3. And now De Jesus, one out of two with a single. Final game of the series tomorrow. It's at 1:15 with Royals live beginning at 12:30. Tomorrow's game is in HD, brought to you by Time Warner Cable, where HD is free with digital cable. And Brian Bannister will be pitching against Joel Pinheiro. Well, part of this is the Royals not swinging the bats well at the moment, but don't forget. The way the Cardinals are pitching. Before today, the Cardinals, as a team, had only allowed two runs in the last four games. So they're pitching very well, and the starters have been the best. If you add in today's game, Cardinal starters have given up one run in their last 34 innings. That's Zach Grinky like. Two down in the sixth inning. Don't forget immediately after the game, it's Boulevard Royals Live with Joel Goldberg. On field interviews, highlights, analysis, and much more. Brought to you by Boulevard Brewing Company, Kansas City's beer. And a good looking shot there of the sellout crowd at Bush Stadium. 
Bases empty two away and now Billy Butler. So the Cardinals been pitching well lately and I'm sure that's not a whole lot of consolation for the Royals because this series appeared to be lined up well for them going up against a couple of guys who aren't throwing the ball well Todd Wellemeyer was 0 and 2 in his last two starts and Billy comes up with the Royals fourth hit Wellemeyer had lost his last two given up 11 runs in 10 innings and now Loesch in his last three had a 10.68 ERA. Uh, the one thing they've been able to do is um, is minimize the Rawls uh, at you know base hits you know very few, very rarely have they gotten two base hits back to back and and really that's how you get your rallies going is you, you put two or three hits together and and the, Rawls, and the Cardinal pitching has been able to stop the Rawls from doing that. The end fouls it away 0 for 2 so far. Well, if the Royals batting in the sixth inning right now, that is their 15th inning at the plate in this series, and only once have they had back to back base runners. They haven't had back to back hits yet, but they did get back to back base runners in the seventh inning last night when Jacobs walked and Buck singled. That was when DeJesus laid down the bunt against Trevor Miller and Jason Mott coming out of the Cardinal bullpen throwing fire. And striking out pinch hitters Willie Bloomquist and Billy Butler, but only one inning where the Royals have had back to back runners. And Guillen is hit by a pitch, and now the second inning they've had back to back runners. And Mark Tian will come to the plate with two outs, representing the tying run. This is what Lotz has been trying to do is run his fastball in on the right handed hitters, but he got that one way in too far and, and got a piece of Jose Guillen double. Sometimes it only takes one hit at the right time to really get the offense going. Sometimes it takes a, a two out base hit, a two out double right here. Maybe that'll get the offense jump started and take the pressure of, of that scoreless in, scoring streak. You know, innings without a run scored. I mean, they think about this stuff too. You know, they know what's going on and and the pressure mounts as, as that number gets higher. So this will probably take a lot of pressure off everybody if Mark can come through with a big hit right here. So far a ground ball back to Loesch and a strikeout. Loesch had him reaching it's one and one. Tians had plenty of experience against Loesch from the days when Kyle was pitching for the twins but including his 0 for 2 today just 3 out of 14. But all it takes is one mistake. Up the middle, diving stop by Green. The Royals hit it on the nose twice in this inning. Both times result in ground outs. This is the Coors Light sixth inning, and here is the Coors Light freeze cam. We go back to the first inning. It's a double just inside the line. It's played it two runs for the for the uh, Cardinals on this one. Like Freeze Cam brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. And now timeout is there was a Cardinal employee who went out and delivered a phone, but he forgot to close the gate behind him. So hopefully we have all that squared away. Now Luke Hochaver very close to accomplishing a couple of things today. First of all he's already improved on his first two starts. That's obvious. And really showing the dugout a little something after struggling in the first again back to back walks with two outs on eight straight balls. That's a foul ball. And then giving up the two run double to Stabanoa we just showed you and still able to hold it together and 
the very controversial stat the quality start whether you like it or not he is three outs away from if you can hold the Cardinals scoreless here in the six to a quality start. And he picks up his first strikeout. But the one thing about baseball when you don't score runs uh, everything looks a little dull and slow and and if, if the Royals are scoring runs then his performance looks a lot better and just the way the, the game is when you don't score it, it just seems like it, in most people's mind this is a boring game where you don't score runs and and when you're looking for a quality of a game it's a good mix between the offense and the pitching and and the defense. I remember my first two years with the Royals in 99 and 2000 both years the Royals set franchise records for runs scored with Damon and Beltron and Die and Sweeney and Randa Fabulous but all those blown saves late in the game and the Royals were losing 95 96 97 games a year but the fans still wanted to come out because the Royals were scoring runs it was going a lot of runs I was on a couple of those teams and the biggest thing was well how can we avoid losing 100 so it was it was a frustrating time because you either had the pitching and not the hitting and you had the hitting and not the pitching so in, in alternate years. Stabenoa for the second straight game driving in two runs in the first inning. Got a double we just showed you past the diving Mark Tian in the first today scoring pool holes in Duncan. Looking foul. Great catch down there by a fan who brought his glove. Yeah, he's right on there. The ball's looking right into his glove. He just stands right up. That's one where you stand, you, if you're sitting behind him, you hope he catches it. <laughs> because he didn't, he didn't blurred your vision. You can't see where the ball's going. So you hope he you hope he brings the ball down. <laughs> Avilas deep short. Got him. Todd Tishner, the umpire at first, making sure that Butler had hung on to it before making the call. Yeah, it's an excellent play by Mike. It goes back on the grass and takes his time and really makes a nice throw. And Billy does a great job stretching out and and making this play a lot, lot easier for Mike. And now, Blue Coachaver has gotten an out against his last eight batters. Last man to reach was the man standing up there now, Yadier Molina, who singled leading off the fourth inning. Well, his sinker's really starting to go down, and uh, his breaking ball's gotten a little sharper. And I think that's been uh, one of the things that's helped him in the last couple of innings. Has his second hit. You know, another question in regard to Luke and something that he has to prove this year at the big league level was his endurance, his stamina. The Royals really felt like he tired around the fourth or fifth inning last year and didn't have the same stuff from that point on. Well, he's pitching into the six. His pitch count is in. Very good shape. He's only at 81 pitches and almost through six innings. He added about 10 to 15 pounds to his lower body. He had a little more strength during the offseason. And when a pitcher loses stamina, it's usually a result of the legs not being as strong as they should be because the pitcher without his legs is not going to go very far. So that's where the strength and conditioning and the running and all that comes in. That's why pitchers run more than than any other guy uh, player on the on the on the field. At least when I played, they ran a lot more, uh, and they they said, well, it's because of endurance, 
leg strength and gets through those middle innings. Right at Coco in center field. So Hochaver does get six innings in there today, allowing three runs, but the Royals haven't scored yet. Go to the seventh inning. Here's the Verizon Wireless game summary, and Luke Hochaver with by far his longest outing, giving up three runs in six innings. Cardinals getting two of their three in the first for the second night in a row on a Nick Stabanoa two run double. And then a home run from Skip Schumacher in the third inning. And then Hochaver with three scoreless. The Royals, however, have been scoreless now for 21 consecutive innings going back to the game on Thursday. And now Tony LaRussa is going to make a change here that will not involve the pitcher but as Frank talked about last night Schumacher learning a new position second base but when you get into the later part of the game get him back out to his natural position in the outfield and get a more experienced second baseman in there right uh, Tony just didn't want him to be in the in a close game where an error would uh, cost the club the game and that might set his uh, learning process back so he, that's why he gets him out of there and I think that's a great way to bring in a guy when you're asking him to learn a new position and Tony felt he was learning to learn, it was getting him to learn the toughest position where you have to do a lot more thinking and and he just wanted him to make sure that that program just sort of stayed on uh, on schedule and not not have a, a misplay setting back. Now why would this happen. Right before the first pitch was going to be thrown, rather than as the team was taking the field, he probably just thought about it. <laughs> and that happens sometimes. Yeah, normally, normally you're dealing with the pitchers uh, and, and making a double switch. <laughs> it just Pujols is going to go to the line himself and tag out Kiaspo 0 for 3 today and 0 for 7 in the series. And now Olivo, who has doubled twice. This year, the Royals will be hosting another alumni fans batting practice. It's on July the 11th from 8 a.m. until noon at Kauffman Stadium. And July the 11th is a Saturday. Strike one on Olivo. There'll be 10 Royals alumni there to work with you. And it's going to be different this year as we've had. Alumni batting practice for male adults. Well, we haven't advertised it that way, but that's usually who shows up. And then last year we started including the kids, 14 and older. Well, this year moms are encouraged to come out. Moms, dads, and kids, 14 and older. It's $300 per adult, $100 for each kid, but you'll be out there for four hours, 8 a.m. until noon. At Kauffman Stadium with the Royals alumni, and it's only limited to 40 spots. So you'll get plenty of attention from the Royals alumni. If you're interested, go to the Royals website, royals.com, and look for the link. Full count on Olivo. Last inning, the Royals got a sharp ground ball from. Coco Chris, but was handled at second base by Schumacher. Speaking of moms, there's the lovely Teresa White, who appears to <laughs> wish there was some better air conditioning at the ballpark. You've got the family here, or at least part of the family. Uh, she's got my granddaughter, and she loves being at the ballpark, and she likes all she likes chewing on a hair. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she has a son, Joe, who's 21 today. He, so he, he's, he's in there. He is. He's in this area right there. And then uh, you are not going to be with us tomorrow because Jordan is graduating from high school. Yeah, that's our, that's our last one. And uh, everybody's happy. <laughs> <laughs> Royals down in order in the seventh.
Cardinals three Royals nothing here in St. Louis and now we go around the league brought to you by Panera Bread here are the AL Central teams in interleague play tonight Pirates at the White Sox Colorado at Detroit Tigers have won seven in a row have a four game lead over the Royals Milwaukee at Minnesota Minnesota has scored 31 runs in their last two games Michael Kadire hit for the cycle yesterday and then Cleveland will be at Cincinnati the Reds winning game one yesterday three to one So the twins had two guys who have hit for the cycle so far Jason Kubel who hit a grand slam for his final hit of the cycle and then Michael Kadire needed a triple and got that in his last at bat doing it the hard way. Luke Hochaver is going to pitch into the seventh inning. Kyle Loesch has lined out to left. He has dropped down a sacrifice bunt. Now this is the type of game. Minus a couple of the runs of course maybe one or two of the runs but Luke Hochaver throwing his sinker. Only one strikeout using the defense. He's in great shape with his pitch count. That's only his 88th pitch. Ball hits his glove, and Loesch is going to reach. As Hochaver really should have never even attempted that. That could have been ugly. So Loesch ends up with an infield single. Uh, Luke is so tall, and that ball's hit right back at him over the mound, and, and, and actually had a chance to catch it, but it just went off the heel of his glove and straight up over his head. and. The, the, the throw to first base might have been ill advised that could have got away and created a bigger problem than, than they've already have right here but. But the one good thing you said was that. The ball is sinking he is getting ground ball and he's pitching the contact and he's deep in the game those are all positive today. He's at 87 pitches and we're in the seventh inning. And now green showing bunt hope for two so far. Saved a run for the Cardinals on defense in the sixth inning. Royals had two balls hit right on the nose that were outs. They also had a single and a hit batter, but it was Green's diving play up the middle on a ground ball from Tian that kept the shutout in order. And now seven shutout innings for Kyle Loesch, who is the runner at first base. And now swinging away and the count is one and one. Well the first thing we talked about or the first words that you heard if you're with us from the beginning today was that the bullpen bailed out Hochaver on Sunday against Baltimore and now the bullpen needs Hochaver to bail them out with a long outing today. Well they can definitely use a break. They've been work, they worked pretty hard. Run it back to Luke. Green is out. Loesch moves up to second base. And now the top of the order. Well if you're. Looking for a great selection of Royals caps t-shirts jerseys and more. Go to the Royals official online pro shop. It's open 24 hours a day. And seven days a week. Get your gear straight from the source the Royals dot com pro shop. And out comes Trey Hillman so. He might be making a double switch. Willie Bloomquist is out of the dugout. And Mike Avilas, who made the final out of the seventh inning. So Bloomquist will be leading off the top of the eighth in the pitcher spot. And Ron Mayhay will take over for Hochaver, who gives up three runs in six and a third innings. Willie Bloomquist does take over at shortstop, so he'll hit in the number nine position on a double switch with Ron Mayhay, who will bat in the eight position. Mayhay has given up more hits than innings pitch, so the league is hitting 305 against him, but he also has more strikeouts than innings pitched. And he's going to get left hand hitting Skip Schumacher. Huge step in the right direction for Luke Hojaver today. I think he's got to be real happy with this performance uh, based on the, the previous two and 
and, uh, and he knows that I think he realizes that if he gets a sinker over the plate and let it play out and get his ground balls he can have more games like this. Now the line itself looks good for him considering his first two starts allowing three runs and six and a third he's still responsible for Loesch at second but I would think the Royals are even more impressed because of the way he started with a couple of four pitch walks two runs in the first he was able to pull it together and get into the seventh inning and Schumacher almost knocks Mayhay's cap into center field holding at third base is Loesch. And the Cardinals have runners at the corners with one out. Schumacher with his second hit of the game. Well, you're talking about the light passing in front of your face right here. This line drive was by Ron before he even got his hands up. And uh, that's one he says, okay, you can have the base hit. I mean, pitchers have to be pretty, pretty lucky to get out of wear balls like that. Yeah. And that's you see a white flash like that you're not sure if it's a baseball or if you're about to visit St. Peter. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and now Colby Rasmus 0 for 3 3 ground outs. Mayhay throws strike one. To the right side, Kiaspo gets a glove on it. And the Royals get an out. Good play by Kiaspo, but a run scores to make it four to nothing. So Rasmus ends up with an RBI. And Kyle Loesch, who opened the inning with an infield single, comes around to score. This is a great play by Alberto. I mean, he goes far to his left, gets up. And just spins and throws. You almost have to know where first base is to make a play like that. And now the Royals will not mess with Albert Pujols. This will be the ninth time he has intentionally walked this year, the most in the National League. And the fans don't like it because almost everyone. Came here to see him swing the bat. I imagine even some of the Royals fans that came here today would like to see him swing the bat, but this is a no brainer with a left hand batter coming up. <laughs> I think the Royals fans can understand more why we're doing it than the, <laughs> than the, than the uh, Cardinal fans. They want to see the Cardinals add on more runs. Well, the Royals fans say, yeah, don't pitch to this guy. Let's get the next guy. <laughs> Today's copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Kansas City Royals it may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Kansas City Royals Baseball Corporation. So the run in this inning is charged to Hochaver as Duncan flies to left. And Jesus makes the catch. So Hochaver gets up four runs and six and a third. And now the Royals only have six outs to go on offense. <laughs> Royals baseball brought to you today by Panera Bread. Explore a menu full of hearty soups, hand tossed salads, inventive sandwiches, and savory breakfast items. Panera Bread, where every detail matters. Willie Bloomquist as part of the double switch will bat at the number nine spot. Struck out last night appearing as a pinch hitter against Jason Mott. Over the head and almost knocked the helmet off of Rusty Kuntz's head. Bloomquist, Crisp, and DeJesus here in the eighth inning. Kyle Loesch over to Pujols. Well, no disrespect if the Royals were kind of licking their chops when they were looking ahead at the pitching matchups. And this is going back to the game on Thursday. 
facing Carl Pavano 6.33 ERA and the Royals had already beaten him. The Royals losing the game on Thursday. And then Todd Wellemeyer facing him and his ERA was around six going into last night's game and wasn't pitching well. He was pitching even worse than that six ERA and then you have Kyle Loesch. And the Royals are facing today and Loesch hasn't won in exactly a month. And his ERA since his last win is seven point five. But the Royals have not scored now in their last twenty two innings. Well as hit as you do look at the ERA going into a game and you look at how many runs a pitcher's given up and that'll almost tell you what what type of approach you need to uh, going into that game. So you see a guy with a five ERA. Then you can anticipate scoring at least four or five runs and, and hoping your pitch can hold the, hold the opposition down. So it is a, a positive going into a game, but uh, you know how baseball is. You know, well, you got to get in the game and play it and, and see what happens in the end. Royals have only stranded four runners in the first seven innings. Coco into right center field, and Rasmus got a good break. Ball stayed up for him. And Coco is 0 for 4. Well, leaving the bat, I'm sure Coco probably felt this was going to be a home, I mean, a, a, a base hit in the uh, in the alley. And, and that's what's really made that look easy. He's like he had it tracked all the way. And now 0 and 1 on DeJesus singled back in the first inning, one for three. Two and one. David has hit an eight straight. Average right now at 243. Kyle Loesch at just 96 pitches, so you may have a shot to pitch the ninth. And Cardinal starters now have pitched. 37 and a third innings. Their last 37 and a third innings have allowed one run. One. And how did that guy score? <laughs> Got him looking. Six strikeouts. Loesch has retired the last seven. Four to nothing Cardinals as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning and take a look at today's Home Depot defensive play of the game. Home Depot doing more on defense and a, a deep play by Mike Avila son of stolen base from Albert Pujols a base hit into right field off the bat of Chris Duncan but Pujols wasn't looking back to the plate so he slid into second and then Jose Guillen. Gunning him down from right field as Pujols got up and made a move towards third. Ron Mayhay stays on for the bottom of the eighth inning. And Brendan Ryan hits for the first time. Brendan Ryan was the starting shortstop last night. He was 0 for 3, and now he's 0 for his last 11. Oh. 
Ron Mayhe in relief of Luke Hochaber with one out last inning gave up a single and an intentional walk. We got the last two outs. Luke Hochaber's fourth run scored when he was out of the game. But Luke six and a third innings. Four runs seven hits two walks. One strikeout didn't walk anyone after the first inning. Into left center that's going to split to Jesus and crisp and roll deep. So Brendan Ryan snaps the 0 for 11. And the Cardinals begin the eighth inning with a runner at second nobody out. Here are our final results from you call it presented by Sprint. Well that's a surprise. Fifty five percent think the Cardinals are going to end up winning this division. Only three percent the Reds. We've had several consecutive losing seasons. Fourteen percent saying the Cubs everyone favor the Cubs to win the division and twenty eight percent for the Brewers. I want to thank everyone for participating today and maybe maybe that. 55% for the Cardinals as a result of fans watching this series and saying, man, if these guys play like this, if they pitch like this. Well, that, that's got to be part of it. And, the, you know, the Cardinals always compete and, and they're always going to be there. And that sweep of the Cubs <laughs> had something to do with it, too, probably. Molina taking a shot to the right side with a runner at second base and nobody out. He has singled twice, stolen a base. That's right. He has stolen a base. And now Levo wants to talk with Mayhay. And now laying a bunt down. Mayhay will tag him out. Now I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing more of that from the Royals because allowing the hitters to swing away to get that runner from second to third with nobody out. The first 25 percent of the season hasn't worked well and Trey has discussed that that you know, the Royals are going to have to make some changes as far as how they're going to start moving base runners along. Well that's true and if the hitters aren't using their own imagination and trying to do certain things to get to get the run over sometimes the manager has to take charge and and, and put those plays on and, and try to show them that hey these are these situations will work you just have to think of them when you have to play. Ball one to Brian Barden. I mean that's a guy who has two hits already today. Yadier Molina one to center one to right and. I'm not sure if the sign was put on by Tony La Russa, but gave him one shot to do it with the bat and then put the bunt down and that's in a four to nothing game in the bottom of the eighth inning. We're not talking about a you know no score in the sixth or the seventh. The Cardinals have a pretty comfortable lead and the Royals only have three more outs to go and still just making sure you get that runner over to third. You just want to add on when you get past the seventh inning you just want to add on runs. Any run you can add on after the seventh is a big run and and that's, that's the way Tony La Russa is playing it. Just get this one more run and, and it makes everybody relax and feel a lot more comfortable. The infield is in for Barton who's 0 for 3. Thinking about a squeeze and actually Brendan Ryan he didn't come bolting down from third base but he certainly was wasn't skipping down the line he took a two or three hard steps. Well a lot of times you can go with a pitch out or if you really think they're going to squeeze just throw a, a fastball up and in and make the hitter clear the lane so you can see down the line. So there's a couple ways to approach that with a right handed hitter. Three balls one strike. Jose Akendo, who was 
a very good defensive player and an excellent bunner. Longtime Cardinals third base coach now. Now it's three balls, two strikes. Jose Akendo is certainly a, a player that I'm sure you appreciated. He didn't have the gold gloves that you did, but he had some very impressive years at second base. One year he had only five errors all season. The next year he had only three errors. I'm trying to think who was a second baseman when he was playing with Sandberg still playing mm -hmm. second base. Yep. At, yeah. So that's that same era. So that that probably worked against him uh, that by itself. It's kind of hard when you when you're on a WGN every day <laughs> and everybody get to see every day. Uh, I mean, I can I can definitely feel for him on that one. Getting all that national attention. So first and third, and Kyle Loesch will bat. Not a big surprise, but you never know these days with pitch counts. But he will get a chance to go for his fifth career shutout. And he's had a good day at the plate. He's lined to left. He's laid down a sack bunt. And then leading off the seventh inning, singled and scored. And he is showing bunt and now pulling the bat back. Yeah, this is a great time to squeeze with the pitcher up, or you can do the uh, safety squeeze. Or in his case, he's going to fake, fake bunt and then swing. So just try to get the infielders moving and try to open up a hole in the infield. So he's got a couple choices you can do with the pitcher up there right now. Now the safety squeeze is a bunt but the runner is not charging from third it's his judgment right. It's his judgment uh, to, to follow the, you want to try to bunt it uh, down the first baseline and, and he try to read it and the, the squeeze is when he goes as soon as the pitcher lifts his leg. And Loesch hit by the pitch. And not happy about it. I mean when you when you square around that early and and you don't really know what he's trying to do then really up and in is the best place to throw that pitch. I mean the Royals Ron really doesn't know I mean he, he squared around the bunt he doesn't know whether it's a squeeze or, or a safety squeeze so he throws the ball up and in. Now it looks like it. Got him down around the elbow. The bat ended up hitting Chris Guccione, the home plate umpire, on the head, but it hit Loesch on the elbow. But that could be that part of the elbow where near the funny bone where it can make the hand numb, and that's his throwing hand. Well, I think that's probably what upset him most. But uh, when you got when you got a man on third and when you square around that early, I mean, the opposition doesn't know what you're trying to do, so they're going to throw the ball up and in. And if he is a squeeze, they're going to clear that lane so the catcher can see the runner coming down the line. And you can hear the two way argument, or you can imagine the two way argument. Kyle Loesch is probably saying, you know, what are you throwing inside on me for? This isn't an important run. It's four to nothing. But the Royals can say, well, if it's not an important run, then why are you bunting? Yeah, why even square around? And why are you square around that early to begin with? That may have shook up Ron Mayhay. As his first pitch to Tyler Green landed about three feet in front of home plate. I think once he go, once he thinks about it, uh, he's going to be all right. I think I think the, just the idea of the ball coming up and in and hitting you on your pitching arm, you know, the, the first reaction is, you know, here's the ball. Let me get out of the way. But and you, you get all excited. But I think once he thinks about it, yeah, that's the only thing you can do. Yeah. You know, if there's a runner at first base or a runner at first and second, well, then you can throw it down the middle and take the out. But there you go. Now with a runner third. Now with a runner third. Nope. Of course it's not just Kyle Loesch. I think it's every hitter when you get hit and that natural instinct kicks in they immediately think it was done on purpose. It hurts. And then it <laughs> kind of starts to settle in. OK well maybe he didn't mean to do that. But it's, it's that first initial shot of pain that you get from getting hit. <laughs> Believe me it doesn't feel that great.
Two balls and one strike. On Tyler Green. 0 for 2 with a sack bunt. Also made a good play on defense in the sixth inning, which prevented a Royals run. Well, Lebo had a, an idea about throwing the ball to second base, but I think he might have realized if he doesn't if he doesn't make a nice throw, then th this inning can really get away from the Royals, so he, he held on to it. Now I'm not saying that Olivo should have made that throw and I'm not suggesting it was the right play but that's what begins to happen when you start losing right you lose some of that aggressiveness so well, yeah, he's thinking too much and he remembers the throw that he made in the center field the other day mm -hmm. trying to pick a runner off second base so you you just everybody plays safety first and you don't you don't really take those chances that you would normally take when you're playing free and easy. And now it's three and two. So Mayhay in this inning has given up a double. The only out has been on a sack bun. He's walked Barton. He's hit Loesch. And now he's three and two on Green. And there's nobody throwing in the bullpen. Still three and two. Royals last night used two relievers. Ramirez won an inning and a third. Farnsworth two thirds. But the bullpen in the last three games given up 13 earned runs in only eight innings. So they could use a mental and a physical break. And the Royals. Obviously would like to extend this game and get some runs in the ninth inning. But right now they've only had to use one reliever with Ho Chaver going six and a third. It's five to nothing. Two walks and a hit batter. And brings up the top of the order and Skip Schumacher. Still only one out. And that forces Jamie Wright to begin to warm up in the bullpen. Oh and one. Schumacher with a home run against Hochaver in the third inning. And then he was the first Cardinal hitter today to face Mayhay and almost knocked the cap off of his head on a bullet into center field. 0 and 2. Well, that's 14 runs now charged to the Royals bullpen in the last nine innings over the course of the last four games. Still 0 and 2. And we showed you before the game today that before this stretch, the Royals bullpen ERA was 2.9. That was the best in all of baseball. One and two. Uh, one of the hardest things to do in the game is play the game of afraid to make mistakes and then you end up making too, you're making more mistakes. It's just like you say everybody that tries too hard usually ends up doing worse. So just get back to what you do best and, and, and stay with that and and don't try to do any more than that. And a lot of times that that's all that's needed to get you going in the right direction. So what's it going to take. I mean. Is the team just going to have to get together. They had a players only meeting before today. 
get together in a team effort or is one guy going to have to just step up and just take control of the game and and help will the Royals out of this. Olivo cuts it loose but Barden is back in time at third. Well, well it's going to take a couple big hits and uh, it, it, one guy really can't do it by himself but everybody just needs to go back to what they do best come out to the game prepare for what they do best and get in the game and only do what they can do and don't try to do what the guy behind you can do but say this is what the situation calls for this is what I'm going to do and I think as you as you reach those situations and, and you're successful in them then that's where the confidence comes from but when you're trying to do get a two run homer when when there's nobody on base it, it's kind of hard to do that so just do what the situation just let the game tell you what you need to do and just stay within your abilities to do it and let the next guy take care of him all, take care of himself. Did not call the infield fly rule as Bloomquist had to go out into shallow center field. So Schumacher is the second out. Brings up Colby Rasmus. Rasmus 0 for 4. He's grounded out all four times, but he picked up an RBI in the seventh inning. Yeah, I've heard so often about teams that are swinging the bat well and are doing it for a long streak. Each hitter will say exactly what you just said. You know, I just go up there and do what I what I can do because I have confidence that if I don't get it done, the guy after me will get it done. As opposed to probably what's going on now is, boy, I better get a big hit now. I better be the guy because we're not swinging it well. And some of the early interviews from the raw players uh, early in the year when they were playing well, that came on a lot. You know, they say, hey, we just we just don't we whatever we can do individually, and we're we're doing doing what the situations call for, and we're picking each other up, and if we got that belief that if and that if I can't get it done, then the next guy behind me is going to get it done. So that's what happens when you're winning, but when you start losing. And you start losing in, in so many different ways, then you just can't put your finger on one thing and say this is going to turn it around. It, it, you just got to go out and play a real good game and win it. And a lot of times it's, it's, it's about winning a close game that gets mm -hmm. you going the right way. And the good teams every year have great records in one run games every year. Now it's three and one on Rasmus. Forty three thousand eight hundred twenty nine here today. It is the seventh sellout of the season. And the second consecutive. In this series. Popped up. Piaspo. Making the play. And after all that, the Cardinals get one, but they lead by five as we head to the ninth. Well, the Royals coming up in the ninth, down five to nothing. Want to congratulate Melissa Ball, who is enjoying today's game in St. Louis, the winner of our Lumiere Casino Go Blue and St. Louis sweepstakes. Melissa from Blue Springs. Not only enjoying the game today, but enjoying overnight accommodations at the brand new, beautiful Lumiere Place Casino, which is not far from the ballpark. She among the 43,829 here today. And Kyle Loesch will not come out for the ninth inning after being hit by a Ron Mayhay pitch. It'll be Chris Perez to try and complete a shutout with Butler, Guillen, and Tian coming up in the ninth. Billy singled last time up one for three also has a line out to right. Out of play.
That is the seventh strikeout for Cardinal pitchers today. Kyle Loesch ended his outing by retiring the last seven in a strikeout of DeJesus. And now Perez begins his outing with a strikeout. Coming up on Boulevard Royals Live with Joel Goldberg. Royals trying to avoid being shut out in back to back games. Talk about Luke Hochaver's third start, allowing four runs in six and a third. Post game highlights and interviews. And a preview of tomorrow Brian Bannister against Joel Pinheiro. Jose Guillen gets it over the bare hand of Brendan Ryan, who went running out into center field and then reached with the bare hand but didn't get it. Guillen with his first hit. <laughs> that was an interesting effort there. The ball's already by his glove hand, so he tried to do everything he could to make this play, and, and that, that's just an outstanding effort. And ball one to Tian. Mark is 0 for 3. His last time up, he grounded out to the shortstop green, and that saved a run, diving up the middle. That was when it was. A three to nothing game in the sixth, and that base hit would have scored Butler from second base. Two and one. Guillen takes off for second base. The Cardinals not worried about him, and it's two and two. Second strikeout for Perez, and the Royals are down to their last out. So, eight strikeouts for Cardinal pitchers today. The last time the Royals have been shut out in consecutive games was in August of last year. At the White Sox, losing nine to nothing and four to nothing. Kyle Loesch, eight shutout innings today, and Chris Perez has struck out two. He's given up a single to Jose Guillen. It's one and one on Kiaspo, who is hitless in this series, 0 for 7. The end running, and it's Two and one on Kiaspo, no stolen base. When they play that far behind you, you might as well go. I mean, you don't really don't want the other team to tell you how to play your game. So if Pujols is playing up a little closer, like he's trying to play a little defense, I doubt a trade would have ran right there. Royals at 21 and 21. The last time they were below 500 
It was way back on April the 11th when they were just two and three. Right side, Pujols backhands to Perez, and the Cardinals have won back to back five to nothing shutouts. So the Cardinals continue to play well. That's their fifth consecutive win. They continue to pitch well as they have allowed just two runs in their last five games. And especially the starting pitchers who have now given up just one run in the last 37 and two thirds innings. And on the flip side, the Royals' problems on offense continue after that six game winning streak the Royals have now lost 11 of their last 14 games so Kyle Loesch is the winner his first win in a month exactly a month he is four and three and even though Luke Hochaver took a step in the right direction today giving up four runs and six and a third he drops to 0 and two Cardinals for the Second game in a row getting two runs in the first inning. Well, the two runs in the first inning is it, it's really uh, one of those situations where you, you really like the way that Cal Davies went after the first inning last night. You like the way Luke went deep in the game, but you really are putting a little pressure on your offense when you can't get out of the first inning and, and give them a chance to get going. So they really feel like they got to try to get it done a lot faster. Five to nothing, St. Louis. Time now for Boulevard Royals Live. This is the Royals Live Post Game Show, presented by Boulevard Brewing Company, Kansas City's Beer. Welcome in to Boulevard Royals Live. Once again, the St. Louis Cardinals with the shutout of the Royals. They'll look for the sweep tomorrow as another big crowd on hand to witness it here in downtown St. Louis. And we're joined right now by Cardinals catcher Yadier Molina. And first off, let me let me ask you about your pitcher. Second straight day, shutout for you. What made Lowe's so good today? Yeah, they're doing pretty good. I mean, I mean, like the series against the Cubs um, and this series so far. I mean, they're doing pretty good. Going, going late in the game. I mean, keeping the ball down, get get, a great, uh, get ahead in the count. I mean, that's good for us. I know. I was talking to you yesterday, and I said, "Hey, your numbers are good." And you said you've been struggling lately at the plate, but you get a couple of hits today. What did you see from Luke Hochaver on their side? Yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, the scene, the ball move a lot. I mean, when he's down, it's nasty. I mean, when he get the ball down, you know, it's so hard to pick it up. And you know, when he, he made me stay up, so we take advantage. Finally, uh, you've been around here now for a long time. You're one of the veterans of this group. I know everybody always talks about the youngest of the Molina brothers, but you got a young group here. What, what have you been able to do to, to keep this team playing so well? Yeah, we got uh, a talent group over here. We got a bunch of young guys that they know how to play the game. Um, um, they're just having fun. I mean, they're just having fun. And, and at the same time, they have fun. We have fun, too. I right, appreciate it, Yadi. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. That is Yadi or Molina, the youngest of the Molina catching brothers. Seems like we always get a chance to talk to Jose or sometimes Benji. That was Yadi or who the other brothers say is the best of the bunch. Let's go back upstairs to you guys. All right, Joel. Well, Yadi are saying the Cardinals are having a lot of fun, especially with the way they're pitching. Right now, the Royals are not having a lot of fun. Well, they're not having a lot of fun, and he really pointed out the, the key to the success of their pitchers to this point was that they are pitching down in the zone and staying ahead of the head of the hitters, and they're making the defense uh, work, and the defense is playing well. They're standing on their toes, and uh, getting those two runs every day in the first inning. Uh, it really puts a lot of pressure on the Raw's offense to get going early. It'd be kind of nice if the starters can go out and go deep into the early part of the game, third, fourth inning, and and give the uh, the offense a chance to kind of get into the game. But they're really from day, from the first pitch are trying to catch up, and that sometimes that's a little hard. It's been a long time now since the Royals have scored. You have to go back to the third inning on Thursday, so 24 consecutive innings. It's the third time they've been shut out this year. Back to back shutouts going to last night and the first time since August of 2008. Well, I mean, Trey Hillman will be asked, Kevin Seitz will be asked, all the hitters will be asked after the game, but, uh, you know, what's it going to take? Because Royals, I mean, 
take nothing away from Carl Pavano Todd Wellemeyer and Kyle Loesch but you're not talking about guys that were setting the world on fire prior to their starts. Well you're not talking about guys who should keep you from scoring runs and I, I think right now the, the uh, offense is just at a point where everybody's really trying to do too much. Everybody seems like they're trying to find their way. You know Caspo going from a hot hitter in the sixth and seventh spot to number two trying to get something going early. Uh, that, that doesn't seem to have worked. Now David Jesus goes back down. So I think he's just trying to figure out what's best for each one of these guys in the lineup and then just put them out there and let them go right now uh, as you're moving around and trying to search for that combination. It, it may take a little while. Luke Hochaver a step in the right direction for him giving up four runs in six and a third innings after struggling in the first. But nowadays it's not so much about good individual performances it's about the team getting a win and even though he pitched away he did it's still a loss and it is a loss but it's 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 something that he can really build on uh, Molina really made the statement that uh, when he's down his ball really moves and and I think that's the key right there and coming out today I think what I like to have him take out of this game is the fact that hey if I throw the ball over the plate and if I let my sinker do, do what it does and if I keep my breaking ball sharp and down I can get I can get into these games and I think I, I'm hoping he'll take that away from this game today and that be his confidence to, uh, it'll get his confidence to the point where he can go out his next start and be ready to go. So he pitches well overall but I'm wondering do you think it was better for him to experience what he did today I mean if he had been lights out you know you're going from one extreme to the other. He struggled early on and had to find his way through it. Well I'm sure earlier in the first inning after giving up the two runs he probably in it, through his mind price oh here we go again but but he stayed with it and, he, and his breaking ball wasn't as sharp early and that, that's what that's the ball that was hit down the line by stabbing off with a double and, and the home run was a breaking ball that stayed up to a Schumacher. So I think after that he really settled down and got and kept his pitches down and, and got the ground balls and and I think that's what he does best and and just being out there with I said before the game just throw caution to the wind. What do you got to lose just throw the ball over the plate and see what the hitters do with it. Well it worked much better for Hochaver today but takes the loss again it was too much Cardinal pitching last night it was Wellemeyer for six in the bullpen today it was Kyle Loesch in eight innings in the bullpen more Boulevard Royals live right after this.